Training Systems, Mock Bar Training Facility, wonderful Vanessa, and the fantastic subject of the shoulder. We're going to talk today about the rotator cuff injuries and the factors leading up to what causes them. So directly going into some of the exercises, we're going to start with the important external rotation. We're going to start with below 90 and above 90. And what I mean by that is, Vanessa, what I'm going to have you do is you're going to Hold easily the other piece in your hand, or you can wrap it around, it's up to you. And what Vanessa you're going to focus on here is go ahead and just externally rotating with your shoulder, not your elbow. So I don't want to see the arm extend itself. I want you really to just focus on the rotation within your shoulder using the muscles. Now, many times we have people have a towel underneath their arm. I think Vanessa, it's better that she doesn't because then she needs to work on her proprioceptive muscles in order to maintain that balance. And also, I don't want her here because then we end up cutting off some of the circulation in the arm and she also ends up blocking herself with her elbow against her ribs. So go ahead, Vanessa, and move in here and get out of your way. And go ahead and let's just go ahead and try 15 of those. And when this is done correctly, you're going to see that the elbow really doesn't change position and you're going to notice most of the rotation coming from the shoulder. And the client themselves will notice a burning sensation anywhere from around here to even a bit lower in the shoulder. So usually what we would have the athlete go through is about 15 to 20 of them depending on the strength of the band. We don't want it to go too low because then other muscles start getting recruited and we're not working on those four rotator cuff muscles that we really want to focus on. Now, one of the common mistakes I think made is people go from 15 of these directly to 15 on the other side. What we're going to have Vanessa do is I'm going to rotate her and I'm going to go from the below 90 degree external rotation to the above 90 degree. It's actually at 90 degree, but what we do is we turn her, go and keep it in the same hand, and what we're going to do here is we're going to raise her up here and we're going to have her externally rotate now going through 15 again. So now 15 and 15 all, all obviously equals 30, so this is now double the time under tension. Therefore, the rotator cuff not only has to work twice as long, but it has to work in two different uh, planes, if you will. So many times, many of our athletes, like tennis players, have a lot of pain here, or they only have pains in, a pain in their serve. So this is why it's so important to really focus on both of the areas within the external rotation. So I think, Vanessa, you feel that a little bit more now without having the break in between. So if the client or the athlete complains of a bit of a pinching pain, such as an impingement, if you will, what we can do is we can have them slightly lower their arm and then they can go through the same motion here. But what we want to make sure we don't see is that the shoulder itself is moving from here. Again, all the rotation we want comes directly from the shoulder in this exercise. Alright, so, Vanessa, good, fantastic, take a bit of a break. Uh, now, the third exercise we're going to focus on is uh, what we call the empty can. And the reason we call it the empty can is we're going to have Vanessa stand in a position where we're in scaption. So what that is, is if this is zero degrees and this is 90 degrees, we're going to put her shoulders in 30. And when she's in 30 degrees, the reason the name empty can came about was because we're going to turn the thumbs down. And then Vanessa, in this position, what you're going to do is you're just going to slowly come down and you're going to come up. And you have an idea when you're in the right plane because your thumbs will always basically tap your thighs. And in this one, because we're not using any weight, we want to focus that we really go slow and that your shoulders are not really hiked up. Many times we would use a mirror so that you would be able to look at yourself. But in this case, I'm here, so I'm just going to make sure that you're not really over um, flexing your shoulders if you will, yeah? So within that, let's go ahead and have you do 15 of these and let's just see how it feels. And usually we get a nice little burn in this part of the shoulder. So with that being said, let's go ahead and have you at 30 degrees. So I think we can have you go in phase forward if you want. You can do So what we're gonna have you do, usually what I do with the athlete is I take them thumbs down, I set them right here so they feel the motion, I set the motion here, and then what they're able to do is then on their own, keeping the shoulders depressed, go ahead and just want you to go ahead and try to go through 10 of those. So one, two, and a lot of times what I would do as a therapist is I will move behind them, and as they do it, I will start feeling the back of their shoulders. And really, they should feel a bit of a burn, really in the hmm, back portion, top part of their shoulders. So we would say the posterior superior portion of their shoulder. And here, I can, a lot of times when I palpate or when I touch it, I can feel a bit of cracking and moving. This is also okay. This, for me, means that she's going through the right exercise. 
Now again, I think one of the common mistakes we make is we bring them through 15 and then we say, okay, that's good, go ahead and take a break and then we do a few more sets. What I wanna do with her now is after she goes through a few of them, I'm then gonna bring her behind her back and she's gonna go in the plane of zero degrees. So go ahead and continue to exercise that. And then in zero degrees, I can continue to palpate the area to see if there's some of that crunching and cracking going on, which again is okay if it doesn't hurt. But usually what the athlete will feel right away is their arms start getting quite heavy. In this exercise, it's totally cool to use one kilo, two kilos worth of weight. We don't want to go too heavy because then again, we end up recruiting other muscles for this exercise. But Vanessa, I think you realize right now with no weight at all, your shoulders start to burn a little bit, yeah? yeah. All right, so the factors that usually lead to the rotator cuff um, injuries, if you will, is gonna be mobility, strength and flexibility. So when I say mobility, I mean uh, mechanical or mechanical pressure, if you will, or tissue work like massage. The strength will be the strength of the rotator cuff or the weakness of the rotator cuff. And the flexibility will be the actual length, we're gonna say, of the muscle itself. So we have many other videos talking about the mobility portions of it, the flexibility portions, but I think this is very important here that we discuss what exercises we do and how we at GTS do them a little bit differently. So again, just to recap quickly, we started with the external rotation from here without using the towel, but controlling the elbow below 90 degrees. The second one was at 90 degrees, or if you feel a bit of a pinch, a little bit below was also okay. And this is again with no break, so we did 15 and 15, so a total of 30. And then we took you through your empty can exercise, which was at 30 degrees, or we also call this plain scaption. And then when she was done doing this, we then took her from behind and went through the motion here. Okay, so what I would usually subscribe to most of, or prescribe to most of my athletes is they go through all of those exercises at least two times without circuiting the motion, yeah? So really going through all of those, taking a bit of a break and then going through them one more time. Because we believe that most of the injuries in the rotator cuff are not coming usually in the first set of the tennis match or in the first half of the football game, but towards the end when our muscles and our movement are, is getting tired, therefore we're having faulty movement patterns and, and that's when the injury is coming. So that's why it's so important. We focus not only on the strength, but also the muscular endurance. So guys, again, Grand Training Systems, gtsgermany.com, Facebook, Instagram, and everything else is also Grand Training Systems. Vanessa, I appreciate it, thank you. Beautiful mock bar, we always love it. Come check us out when you're in town or if you're in Sinifingen. And until next week, peace.